This is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to summarize a few things about some of the most important distributions we've looked at. Um, I'm also going to refer you, hopefully I'm going to get these up soon, a video introducing some of the statistical functions in Excel. A lot of these distributions that we're working with have built-in uh, things, kind of like the calculators do in Excel. And then we're going to use, uh, and then I have a big spreadsheet that has a lot of this stuff set up already. And there'll be a video on that as well. And uh, if you have access to my files in my Google Drive, uh, you have access to that particular spreadsheet. So you can look at those videos later. In this video, mainly I'm just going to cover this one slide here. And so this is a summary of the four biggest uh, or most important discrete distributions and the ones we've looked at. We've looked at geometric, binomial, hypergeometric, and Poisson. So that's kind of the first line there just has the name and then the next line has uh, in the table has the uh, the situation and it describes what the random variable is and kind of what the situation is that sets it up. So notice that basically the geometric binomial and hypergeometric are all basically based on doing some kind of sampling. Okay? And the geometric and the binomial sampling we're doing independent Bernoulli trials with the same probability of success each time. So P is the probability of success every single time in both the geometric and the binomial. One way to get that is to sample and replace it every time. So binomial is like doing sampling with replacement or essentially having an infinite population so that you're assuming that that probability of a success each time is the same. So if that probability of success each time is the same, that could lead to both the geometric and the binomial. What we count for x, however, is a little different. In the geometric, x counts the number of trials until we get the first success. So we know for sure we're getting one success. What we don't know is how many times it's going to take us to get a success. So that, that number of times is x. And it's defined by the, just the parameter p. That's going to tell us which geometric uh, distribution we have. In the binomial, we have a fixed number of trials, a fixed sample size n, and the probability of success for each one of those items in the sample is p. So that could be drawing from a finite population with replacement. And then x counts the number of successes in the sample. We know how many times we're going to do the experiment, how many, how, what our sample size is. What we don't know is how many successes we're going to get, and that's x. So to define a binomial, you need two parameters. Defining parameters, you need the sample size n and the probability of the success on each trial, p. So you have to give it both n and p. The hypergeometric was basically like the binomial, except that we're, like we're in a binomial, one way to think of it is drawing a sample from a finite population but replacing it each time. A hypergeometric is starting with the finite population drawing out a fixed number n, a fixed sample size, just like the binomial, but the sampling is done without replacing, replacing it. And then x, once again, counts the successes in the sample. Now, let's, let's keep talking about those three just a minute, because that's the ones we spent the most time on. Uh, in the hypergeometric, capital N is the population size, just like we always use capital N for the population size and lowercase n for the sample size. We always do that. The number of successes in the population is capital M. Notice the capital letters deal with the population. The lowercase letter deals with the, the sample size. And then X is from the sample, the number of successes in the sample. So it needs all three of those things to be known uh, and entered in basically before we know which hypergeometric distribution we're dealing with. You can also have the, the capital N and the M and divide capital N, uh, M by capital N, M over N, to get the probability of a success on the first trial, which is also the proportion of successes in the population. We call that P, and that's the same P that we used on the binomial, so probably success of the first trial. If we put the item back each time, then that probability of success stays the same, and that's its probability of success on every item. But on the hypergeometric, we don't put it back each time. We draw out a new one. And so the probability of success each time is only P for the very first draw, not for the other items.
it changed it's a conditional probability and it changes uh, in all three of these cases we let q be 1 minus p which is a probability of failure at least on the first trial in the case of the geometric and the binomial it's a probability of a failure on every trial now the geometric you're doing you're doing these Bernoulli trials until you get a success well you can't get a success unless you do at least one trial so it starts at one but it goes on forever uh, there's no upper limit here. I mean, it could take you thousands of times till you get a success. Not likely, but theoretically possible. So there's no upper bound here. So what you get is all the natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so forth. Forever. On these other three, the Poisson, the hypergeometric, and binomial, you get, I'm sorry, not the Poisson. Here we go. Now it's fixed. So what we get is, in, in both of these, in all three of these cases, the Poisson hypergeometric binomial, you can have zero successes. So zero's there, as well as one, two, three, and so forth. And in binomial and hypergeometric, that stops at n, which is the sample size, because it's the number of successes in the sample. Could be zero, could be one, could be two, and so forth. But it, it could go up to all of them, which would be n, but it can't go beyond that. The Poisson uh, is also a number, a whole number, but it's all whole numbers. It goes on forever, but it includes possibility of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth, forever. Now, we have formulas for the PDFs in all of these cases. Um, let me go back and talk about the Poisson just a minute. X up here in the Poisson represents the number of occurrence of an event over time where the occurrences are random, independent of each other, and uniformly distributed. The defining parameters, most people call it lambda, but it is the mean. So I'm going to call it mu. It is the mean. It is the rate per unit. Most often called lambda, you'll see. I'll call it mu. So the probability function, we have formulas for all these. So the PDF of x is p times q to the x for the geometric. For the binomial, it's n choose x times p of the x times q to the n minus x. For the hypergeometric, it's m choose x times n minus m choose uh, lowercase n minus x over uppercase n choose lowercase n. So that's the bottom is the number of ways of choosing a, a sample of n items, little n items from big n in the population. The m choose x is choosing x samples, x successes in the sample from the m successes in the population. And this second one up here is the way of choosing the n minus failures in the sample from the capital N minus uh, capital M failures in the population. So mul multiplying those out, divide, that gives you the PDF. The PDF over here in the Poisson is e to the minus mu over mu, uh, e to the minus mu times mu the x over x factorial. Again, like most books will put a, a lambda where I have a mu. Now, the good news is three of these, the geometric, binomial, and Poisson have PDFs, geometric PDF, binomial PDF, and Poisson PDFs built into your calculator. The CDF, we have formula. The only one we have a really nice formula for is the geometric. It, it's the sum of the PDF. And it turns out there's a real nice formula for it. It's just 1 minus q to the x for the CDF for a geometric. So that makes that one really kind of unusually nice. But most of the time, you just have to add up the stuff. So, um, for example, the CDF for the uh, binomial is you're just adding up uh, all these this binomial formula for this x equals k up to whatever the x is that's in here. Similarly for this one and this one here. But, again, the good news is there's a geometric CDF, a binomial CDF, and a Poisson CDF built into your calculator. Uh, we built in a hypergeometric CDF function into the calculators by programming that in. And so now we have essentially the same functionality there. We have some, uh, again, the probability density function PDF of k is the probability that x equals k, that one value of x, not more, not less, just that one. The cumulative density function is actually the probability that x is less than or equal to k, the true CDF. Some of the calculators on some of these things, including our calculator program on the hybrid geometric, isn't a true CDF. It actually finds the probability between two numbers, two x values. Now, the mean, in general, is the expected value of x 
And you find that by adding up the x times, you take the x's times their probabilities, x times the PDF of x, and then add those, those products up for all x's. And we have some nice formulas for some of these, actually for all of these. The, the geometric, the mu, is the mean, is just 1 over p. For both the binomial and hypergeometric, the mu is n times p. And the Poisson, the mu is just mu or lambda. The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. The variance is expected value of x minus mu squared. So the way we would do that is we take x, find mu first, take x minus the mu's, square all of those, multiply all of them by their probabilities, add them up, and then finally square root to get the standard deviation. And we have some shortcut formulas for that. For geometric, it turns out to be the square root of q over p for the, for the standard deviation. For the binomial, it turns out to be the square root of n times p times q. And for the hypergeometric, it's like the binomial square root of n times p times q with this other factor under the square root, population size minus sample size over population size minus 1. And we've got a really nice relationship over here for the Poisson that the mu is actually the mean and it's also the variance. So the sigma is just the square root of the mu as it turns out. So this little table kind of summarizes a lot of things that we have about these four important uh, main discrete distributions that we might study. Now there are other discrete distributions out there. For example, I think I have a video over a negative binomial a little bit later on that for my class is strictly, uh, strictly optional. It's not going to be on the homework or the exam, but I do have a little introduction to that one a little bit later on in the playlist. If, uh, if your class, if you're maybe taking this somewhere else uh, and, and your teacher does talk about negative binomial, I'll have that there as well. It's kind of an extension of the ge uh, generalization of the geometric distribution. So um, anyway, this gives you a, a nice little preview, or not, not preview, but summary of these uh, four distributions.